Yeah, it's the Archivist, y'all. Exclusively interviewing Mr. Yellow. What up, what up, what up, what's she? Chillin'. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How What is this thing you got going on here? That's what they call a dally, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god. Yeah, man. Let people know about that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Who crowned you with that thing? Veronica Waipo from the Ojibwe Reservation in Ontario. Wow, man, this is dope. Yeah, for sure. And who is Yellow Wolf? Um, yeah, my name is Jella Wolf. I'm from Gadsden, Alabama, in the States. And uh, I live in a small town called Gadsden. It's close to the Talladega racetrack. So if you've ever seen a NASCAR racetrack or seen Slick Ricky Bobby or Ricky Bobby, you know, from Talladega Nights, I live about 20 minutes from that place. And um, I'm like just a small town, blue collar, working class rapper. And um, making my rounds around the world, you know. This is my second trip out of the States. My first trip was out to Norway. And uh, so, man, I'm happy to just be migrating, bringing the sound. And living in many cities in your life, which was your best place and why? Uh, <laughs> shit. I guess the coolest spot that I ever lived was... Um, um, <clears throat> Shit, man. There's been so many. I, I've, every spot has had its moments. Berkeley, California had its moments. I was with all my homies out there skateboarding. Nashville, Tennessee was crazy. You know, I began getting crazy in the streets and causing ruckus. Atlanta, same thing. Gadsden, Alabama. Every, every place has a, a moment in time that, you know, that's special. So there's no, no one in particular that I... That I that I choose to be the favorite, really. But um, I'd say, you know, if I did have to pick one, it'd have to be Gadsden. You know, no place like home. And how was the mixtape hustle before being signed for the first time? Oh, shit, man. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the mixtape hustle before I got signed just was like, um, uh, you know, just constant constant shows man like you know we put out Slip Ricky Bobby then we put out Stereo then we did uh, an experimental record called Arena Rap with a band and then after we did that we jumped back and just did some raw just straight rap shit um, called Trump Music and Trump Music just started picking up speed you know we shot a video for Pop the Trump we had a feature with Joel Santana for mixing up the medicine uh, the feature with Bun B and uh, Ray Kwan all those cosigns were hugely important you know uh, up to that I had no features with any rappers you know what I'm saying anyone out so um, I mean Trump music just took it to that next level so man um, it's all about persistence you know what I'm saying faith and time and working with Houston Slim Thug Dipset's Joel Santana D12's Bizarre Outcast Big Boy and Mr. Paul Wall how was and what was your best collab so far? Uh, my, you know, the, my fav, my most favorite collab so far, I think, is uh, is Big Boy. Um, Outcast was just, you know, hugely influential in my career. You know, being that they were Southern artists to break boundaries that was typically Southern sound. And, uh, you know, I, I was just honored to be a part of the Outkast crew. You know, Andre 3000 produced the record, and Big Boy uh, gave me spots for 16 bars, and I split an eight with him. It's called uh, Your DJ Ain't No DJ, out on his album now. And uh, that's been my fave so far. And how is it being signed to Interscope? Where will this take you? It's quite an accomplishment. Um. <laughs> hey, man, you go far. Hey, um, <laughs> stop. Ah, uh, yeah. Yo, you know, I think, you know, life has changed since I've signed with Underscope, you know. Um, it's just more work to do, you know, and uh, you have to be ready to be signed to a major. I mean, get, being signed to a major is kind of like a test. Like, they'll put you on a team, but now you got to go play. 
you know, you got to prove that you're supposed to be there. So, I mean, it's all about just being persistent and um, staying grounded, staying focused, and really maintaining what you had going in the first place and, and making sure that you stay rooted to what it is that you started with in the first place, you know. And shit, man, hopefully there's a hit sprinkled in there somewhere. That's always good. And Box Chevy Part 2, pretty fly and a dope concept. Tell us how you made this and came up with a banger video like this. Um, for Box, you're talking about the Box Chevy Part 2, not the one that's on Trump Music, but the uh, the video. Uh, Box Chevy Part 2 we did on uh, stereo. Uh, I've, I've had a Box Chevy record on every project. And um, the Part 2 we did on stereo out in Miami and uh, came back to the crib and Dave Wilson, which is a homie of ours, who I was introduced to by Malay and Redskin, um, came out to Gadsden and we just grabbed a camera, really. He, he was on the way to Gadsden. He was like, yo, you got a song we can do a video to? I was like, well, I guess Box Chevy because it's just about me in a car, so it's pretty easy to pull off, you know? And um, so we just played around, man, until we got it right. You know, we shot it in one day and um, turned out to be a pretty sick little video. And becoming the superstar you are, now being discovered, tell us your description about being fearless in the game. Um, you know, I, I really don't consider myself a, a superstar quite yet. I mean, that's, I'm, uh, I'm you know, flattered that, you know, if someone would think that, you know, but I'm still just now getting started. And, uh, just getting my feet wet, man. I'm still, I'm just now like, as Brother Bear said, like I'm at the mailbox right now. I'm not even started up the driveway to that big house, you know. Um, it's gonna take a lot of work, a lot of years, you know, and a lot of great records to get to that level. And tell us one of your best memories so far in your blossoming career and in the hip hop culture that you've been part of or experienced. I think that uh, one of the most uh, remember, memorable times was uh, going out to uh, work in New York City with uh, with Kawan Preta when I signed with uh, Ghetto Vision and bringing my boy Will Power from Super Hot Beats up to New York. My crew, my homies, all my skateboarders were in New York and we created a vibe in there that it'll never happen again, you know what I'm saying? Like, us vibing in the studio, it was something I had never felt before. Like, just a huge crew in a really nice studio. All my homies, you know what I'm saying? Just making music. We made some of the best music then. And some of that music is still going on the album to come that we made in 07. And um, I learned a lot from that experience, you know? Just the value of having people around you that understand you and uh, and to support you and, and want to see you do well. And at the same time, you know what I'm saying, uh, throw back some beers and have fun and, and make great records, you know. And what are your inspirations behind your work? Uh, inspirations vary. Man. Like, I can take inspiration just really from this view, you know, or just anything man you know anything inspires a record you know uh shit that i did last night the party that i was at or inspiration comes from everywhere you know when i was living in walnut park which i still am um you know all the images and shit that was around walnut park and gas was inspiring my content and that's why i, I really want to stay in the south because you know if i was to move to vancouver then obviously the things i would be rapping about I wrote about float boats and salmon, grizzly bears, shit like that, you know? So, I mean, I'm, I'm very spontaneous and, you know, I soak up the things that are around me. Hence, Daddy's Lambo. When I went to Hollywood, I wrote Daddy's Lambo, you know, because it's inspired by the surroundings and shit. And independently, how many units have you sold before being signed? <laughs> man, I ain't sold shit, man. Um, I've, I've pushed, like thousands of records on the underground over the years just out the trunk and shit but I've never had a record on the shelf never I've never had distribution so I mean 
Interscope is the first time that I have a, a distribution situation. Uh, Trump Music Zero to 60 will be out and available. Um, but right now, again, man, we're just getting our wheels turning. It's definitely not about that for us at this point, you know what I'm saying? We're just trying to create awareness and make sure that people, you know, know who I am and, uh, you know, just getting to know the fans and shit. So the way you do an endo with the bass in your face, you can feel the tempo. Yellows in the place, grab a stand so you should wanna get a copy of the style and Joe ass. The man's so bad. From Alabama with a banjo, clap clap. Sling bass like a Rambo, fix that.